Absolutely delighted now to be joined by Professor uh, Bertel Squire, who, as you know, was the uh, past president uh, here at the Union. First of all, welcome. Thank you. So tomorrow you're going to be talking about uh, TB and poverty. Yeah. Give us some idea of, of what you might say. For 21 years now, my group has been looking at the issue of the costs that TB patients incur in the course of seeking care for, for their condition. And um, I'm delighted that now there's a global recognition, really, of how big an issue this is. So tomorrow's plenary is focusing on social protection and the need to try and mitigate those costs, both in terms of making sure that patients' care-seeking pathways are smoothed out and as quick and easy for them as possible, but also in terms of being able to remunerate um, or support through various mechanisms. So I'm just going to introduce that concept and then we've got a really interesting lineup of people who are going to talk from different angles, including actually a British-born um, woman who has ended up losing one whole lung because of her TB and she talks about what that's meant for her livelihood, for example. I imagine the economic uh, effects are very damaging across the board, but particularly maybe in developing countries. Absolutely right. So um, in, in developing countries what we see is that um, patients, especially in the poorest quintiles of populations, incur what we call catastrophic costs. So these are the kinds of costs that mean that it becomes impossible for those patients and their families to um, support their daily food and shelter needs. And, it, and from that position onwards, they're almost locked into poverty. So one of the things that's been recognised in the new WHO NTB strategy is the need to eliminate those catastrophic costs. And, and clearly that's going to be quite a task. How do you go about doing that? Well, I think, as I was saying just before, there are, there are broadly two approaches. One is to recognise that TB predominantly is in poorer populations anyway, so we need to make sure that our services are very geared towards poorer populations. So diagnostic centres are where there are most people, that you don't expect people to do multiple visits, for example, to get their diagnosis. So that's one strand of work. And the other strand of work is I think we need to recognise that once people are diagnosed, then there needs to be mechanisms to support them through their treatment so that whatever costs they've incurred up to diagnosis are then not carried on through the course of treatment, which as you know is six months in the simplest cases, but in MDR cases we're, we're out to two years or more. And they may not be able to work during that time or all of that time. Um, and so finding ways to support people through that is sort of win-win. It's win for the families in the sense of their livelihood, win for TB control because the likelihoods of them completing treatment are greater. Now we're sitting here uh, in Liverpool where, uh, where you're based. How big an issue is uh, TB still in the UK? So numerically, TB is not a great problem in the UK. We're down below 10 per 100,000 last year for the first time. But I keep saying that, that each case still is a major impact. And I'll give you an example. I looked after, until about two years ago, a young lad born here on the Wirral, uh, lived all his life in the Wirral, went backpacking in Peru, came back with multidrug resistant tuberculosis, needed two years of treatment, spent many months in isolation, ended up completely deaf from the current treatment. That one case is indicative of the kinds of case we see all over the world. So although the numbers are small, each human story, huge impact, huge health system costs as well. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your time.